Hello everyone, welcome back to Dragonfly Engineering. So in last episode we finished the machining and I showed the assembly of all the machine parts here and this is a the third in a four-part series where we actually go through and assemble all these mold parts to make some small plastic parts for a day customer of mine for these clear plastic parts that you can see here. So if you haven't seen episode one or two of the machining of the mold components, then I recommend checking that out. Otherwise, stay tuned and I will show you the process of assembling all of the machine parts to make a family mold for making these plastic parts here. Uh, that's an injection mold. And then next week, after we finish assembling the mold in this episode, we will load the mold onto the molding machine and mold these parts. Obviously, I've already done this, so this is kind of follow up from recording of work I did during the day for a customer of mine. So please enjoy the show. Okay, so one of the first things we need to do here is mount our mold insert into the aluminum base. Sometimes these are called mud bases, but I don't, I don't think it's an appropriate term here. So we'll go ahead and get down to the meat and potatoes of this. Uh, I've got this deburr tool and I'm going to come around and deburr the top of this aluminum pocket. All of these edges are still sharp because it's straight off of the mill. And we'll probably actually spray a little uh, household oil onto our insert here, which I think is ready to go. You know, because the more oil we add, the more we got to remove after we've assembled the mold. Okay, and then check in the geometry again of the two halves. Let me zoom in. So our threaded holes are actually a nice, a nice pounding surface. So now we're just rocking back and forth. All right. So it's starting to align better as it goes deeper and the insertion is becoming more reasonable. So now we can pull our support screws out. Now if I wanted to remove this guy, then I would just drive these screws all the way down and it would push the insert out of the aluminum base. But I think we're good. So stick these to the side. Now we've got M3 socket head cap screws that will screw this base into the mold, which are in the other room, so I'll be right back. I think these are 12 millimeter long. And of course, I don't have the hex key here with me, or maybe this one's it. Yeah. All right, I'll have to see what's going on here. I don't see the M3. All right, let me cut and we'll figure this out. Okay, I figured out what the problem was, why the screws didn't fit in there. Uh, the, I never actually drilled all the way through on these mounting holes for the steel insert because it was when it was in the mill, it was sitting on some parallels and I didn't want to nick the parallels with the drill bit. So I actually uh, drilled, leaving about a millimeter of steel in the bottom. So. Now I can demonstrate how to remove a insert from a mold. I've already started the process and that's how I discovered that the, that the holes weren't drilled through. But basically uh, you drive these jack screws down and it's threaded in the steel insert but pushing on the aluminum below it. And with the right hex key, you basically just start tightening one screw and then you go over and you tighten the other screw. And you keep doing this because and you're kind of seesawing the insert out of its out of its aluminum pocket and eventually as you get higher and higher up the you can screw it out more and more and then right so right now we're kind of rolling this way so the back corner is still kind of jammed up in the aluminum a little bit so we're kind of on the verge of a press fit or a really tight clearance fit uh, where the if your angle is off just a little bit then then it jams up and becomes a press fit so here we go. So you can see on the bottom here, there's no hole right there for the mounting hole, but here we do have a hole. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and drill these holes out, probably with the drill press, and then I'll come back. Oh, and I also just realized that I should chamfer the bottom of these ejector pin holes because 
when the if, you know this this sensor is going to be in the mold like this, but as the the ejector pin is coming through the guide hole, it really needs to see a a cone to lead in because getting all the ejector pins to align perfectly to this perfect hole is extremely unlikely. So we need to lead it in with a cone a little bit to guide the pin in. So I'll do that as well. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. So I got the mounting holes through now. And I also chamfered all of these ejector pin back holes so that we can string the pins in a little easier. And we'll drop this guy in. I gave it a little bit of a diamond hone. I think I mentioned that already. Okay, we'll tap it. All right, so we'll use our, our ramrods here. <laughs> To drive it home. Oh, oh, here I am, almost hitting the, the pin I'm trying to avoid. Okay, so we're getting this guy in here. Okay, that feels good. I don't really feel a step. Okay, so I think the next thing we're gonna do I guess we can change gears and move over to the stripper plate for a little bit. I need to press in our bearings, which will reside in these pockets down here. So let me do that. All right, I got the bearings. So this plate basically interleaves all of the features in the base block. So we need to, before we start playing around with getting this hard steel plate, to interleave with all these fragile little pins. We need to get our bearings in place to ensure proper alignment so we don't damage anything. Feels like I need to deburr the backside. I always pull up a burr when I grind. So let's do that. And we need to do the same thing by adding a little bit of a lead in to only the ejector holes because some of these features are actual mold cavity features. So. I guess we can do that now. Okay, so now at the 11th hour, we won't be fussing about how an ejector pin's not going through there, hopefully. Okay. And these are more basic bearings. They're basically just hard anodized aluminum tubes. You do have to be careful about starting these square. So I'm gonna get a one, two, three block. And we are gonna check squareness. So we're square that direction. Because these aluminum plugs can, or bearings can start crooked and just start gouging away the aluminum. Whoops. I guess we could do it that way. I think I'll, once I get this started square, I'm gonna go over to the Kurt vise and just press this guy in. I'll do that off camera, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I realized that I hadn't machined the pockets, the press fit pockets for the dowel pins that align the two mold halves together. And since we would assembled this insert into the aluminum base where the alignment pins are, I figured we'd indicate on, in on the, the known center of this insert such that our dowel pins will actually follow the precise location of the insert, not the aluminum block. And there was about a one thousandth difference. So it's kind of nice that uh, I forgot to do that because now we can get the mold a lot more precisely aligned to the other side of the features. Anyway, so I will go ahead and machine little pockets into the bottom of these, uh, these bearing uh, relief holes and then meet you back at the bench. Okay, I've got a dowel pin here, 3 8 using a rubber mallet. So what I'm doing is just making sure we can pull it off the, off the mill. 
So yeah, it looks like it's starting, so that's good. Alrighty, so let's pull this thing off and we'll press in some dowel pins. Actually, we can just set these guys right here in the middle since I'm just using a rubber mallet. So I got the square again and we're gonna get these guys started correctly so that they don't lead off in the softer aluminum. And also so I don't ding my insert either, the mold insert that is. Okay, so yeah, I'm just turning this handle here. Yeah, these, these may be sticking out too much. I try not to have to grind off ends of alignment pins, but sometimes, or use the die grinder as it, with a cutoff, cutoff wheel. But sometimes you gotta do it. Because this is rapid prototyping, so I haven't modeled in the length of the pin and all of that. I, I did a rough eyeballing of the stack of the two spacers. All right, so if we need to press it in some more, we will. But let's go ahead and go back to the bench. Now this one's sticking out a little too far. You can use the vise itself as a measurement tool. Okay. All right, so we got our alignment pins started. So I'll meet you back at the bench. All right, so we've got our mold alignment pins pressed in after uh, the serendipitous opportunity to align to this known feature on the mold insert itself. So now, hopefully, our stripper plate will drop right in. And I'm still checking out the asymmetry. So this is one cavity of the molded part, and this is the other cavity of the molded part. And then uh, off camera, I, I, I believe I did this off camera, I machined in the, the little gate. And then this is the sprue where the plastic comes up. So the plastic comes up through this hole, and then shoots through the tiny little gate and then fills each part. Okay, so now we're gonna slide. I think I'm gonna oil these bearings a little bit. These hard anodized bearings do generally wanna have some lubrication in it. So we're just gonna do a test fit. Double checking alignment of the features. And Let's see if we can convince it. Huh, I wonder why there's a step. That's weird. Seems like this side is higher. Yeah, doesn't seem too happy. You know what, I think I may have pressed these guys into the steel too hard and the, and the bearing itself is constricted in diameter. <laughs> All right, I just about got this, this plate back off of here. Yeah, so I have a scrap piece of 3 8 dowel rod here, uh, precision, and it doesn't have any problem sliding into the sleeve bearing back here where it's not pressed into the steel. But as soon as it gets into the, into the steel, part it, where it's constricted, it stops. <laughs> so on this side, I probably can't even start it very well. Yeah, so I basically have shrunk down this entire aluminum ring and such that I, we can't even get the, the rod in. So there's no way I'm gonna get two of them in. So, and if I, if I replace these, these bearings with the, with the lined bearings, with the Rulon or Teflon line bearings, like, like this one here, uh, I think the same thing's gonna happen. So I'm gonna try to see if I can ream out the top of this bearing, and then next time I take this mold apart, I'm gonna have to replace these guys and, and open this hole up by probably half a thousandths or something. It's just a little too aggressive of a press fit. Okay, so I got this 3 8 reamer, high-speed steel. And this probably isn't going to be that great for the reamer because basically we're going to try to machine off the half thousandths of hard anodizing or the one thousandths of hard anodizing, which is essentially like uh, ceramic, like what's on sandpaper. So, but at least we can start our reamer with the non-compressed portion of this bearing. And let's see what happens. I've got a, a kind of a weak hand drill here. I may have to go to a, 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 a bigger drill. <laughs> or 
literally just turn this by hand. Yeah, it's starting to poke through. All righty, let me see what I can do. All right, well that wasn't pretty, but I got the, uh, the rod to move in this bearing and there's actually still aluminum oxide left. Uh, the reamer may be toast though. And then this guy, uh, yeah, similarly. So let's see if our reaming job <laughs> uh, got our plate to, yeah, you can see all this black, probably remnants of the reamer. Uh, anyway, but I think reamers are kind of inexpensive. So let us see now if we can get our stripper plate to drop down there correctly. And this is the orientation. There's two circles that are off set in the features. Okay, it's normal for it to kick back and forth like this with high precision alignments. It's feeling better. All right, look at that. Okay, so now we've got good motion, I believe. How about now it wants to jam up on the, the clearance hole isn't quite enough. Oh, there it goes. Just had to convince it. <laughs> okay, there we go. But that went in with, you know, with so much gumption that I'm not exactly sure how to get it back off of that surface short of um, using a, a chisel, which I use a lot. Let me get that. Okay, so when I forget to put screwdriver pry slots in, I use this woodworker's chisel, and I basically just get the chisel under the edge of the metal there, just enough to start it, and I'll even tap it, you know, because there, there's not a good way to actually pull the stripper plate back off yet. Um, because the springs are not in there. So, and we ground it precise, so there's really not a good edge to grab. So I'm gonna have to dig in there and start it. So you can see I started it there a little bit. And it's a good sign that the gap opened up on this side too. That means our bearing is actually following. Oop, I don't wanna press it back in there. So I'll get my fingernails under there, the screwdriver in there. Once we get the springs and the retention screws in, then this, this motion will be a lot cleaner. It's just that we're basically, we made this, these parts with, with essentially zero assembly tolerance, and we relied on the high accuracy of the mills to have effectively infinite assembly tolerance. So when you do that, you wind up in situations where you can't take your mold features apart. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna pull this right off, like so, because I still need to drill these holes out. Uh, so I'll do that right now. This is the through hole that retains the stripper plate down. So when the mold closes, the mold, the A side of the mold is gonna push on this plate and it's gonna compress springs inside of these pockets. And this plate is, this plate is gonna seat down like we just did it, but I didn't have the springs in there for our test fitting. And this is one of the springs that's gonna go right, right in there. There's not gonna be much travel. Well, actually this one's too short, but there's not gonna be a whole lot of travel on this stripper plate. It's just to move up maybe two millimeters, enough to kick the part off of these little pins right here. I figured I might as well just bring you along. <laughs> Our bearings are a nice key. So it won't fling out of my hand. Okay, this is one of my boxes of springs from Orchard Supply Hardware, you know, rest in peace. Uh, and inside of here is a, I spied a couple of springs on the bottom, these two, which should do the trick. And these springs are closed but not ground, so I may actually take this over to the belt sander and grind a little flat into this spring here so that it sits better in our mold. It's also good to have on bearings, you want like twice the length to diameter and having a long, so a really good bearing would be like this long where there's no way that you can get clocking errors and, and jamming. But right now these bearings are basically uh, two lengths to one diameter and that keeps it kind of square. 
All right, so there it went in. All right, so now when I push down on the stripper plate, it's pulling, or this, I'm compressing the spring. So when the mold closes, the springs will be compressed. And then when the mold opens, this plate is gonna pull the parts off of the little micro pins inside in the mold block underneath the stripper plate. These threads were CNC turned or rigid tapped in, so the screw should be nice and perpendicular. So I'm tightening these screws down, which is compressing the spring underneath. So we can also measure the, the height of the spring or the uh, stripper plate on each side. One, six, nine, and 200. So we'll compress this guy down a little bit more until it feels like the other one. So we are set. So now if I still apply force, <coughs> I probably can't push it because those are some pretty tough springs. But rest assured when the mold, when the molding machine pushes on this with 25 tons of force, this plate is going to go home. <laughs> but we need to take this plate off anyway because we need to measure and, and cut the ejector pins uh, to the correct length so they're flush with the top of this surface on the stripper plate. When the stripper plate is down, which means we gotta pull the springs out. So I guess we just test fitted our springs. I really need to mark these sides. So I'm not having to constantly look at the slight difference between the two. Okay, so we'll drop this guy down. Oh, even though I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna grind an edge, a corner on this so that I can pry the plate back next time I have to take it apart. See, I'm learning. <laughs> okay, so I, I put a couple of chamfers in. You can see that corner right there. And uh, this corner. I did notice that there's a little bit of a, a ding from when I was trying to open this plate up the first time. So I got this diamond plate here. Uh, I got it on McMaster. And it really cuts metal faster than a file, actually. So I just took care of that problem. <laughs> And I already did it on the other side, but I'll, I'll bevel this edge a little bit. Okay. It's probably not good to have diamond dust in our bearing though. All right, so now we can drop this guy on. Like so. You know, if you recall in the bearing block or the uh, mold core block underneath the stripper plate. There was a tube that was sticking up. Well, there's a corresponding tapered hole in the stripper plate and those are concentric and it's kind of a swage lock. Uh, and then the, the ejector pin for the entire system pushes up through all of that. And I'll probably have to chase it with a reamer because I already feel how it's having a little bit of a problem. But yeah, there's an ejector pin that kicks the sprue out of the middle. But yeah, that needs reamed. I'm sure there's a little a little ledge in there I gotta fix. All right, but the mission at hand is to cut our ejector pins to length. So to do that, we need to basically simulate a stack up of our mold. So this, this is the base of the mold, and this is the ejector plate that moves up and down. Probably gonna hit this with the, because I'm not sure if I wanna use diamond on the aluminum. Uh, I'm gonna sand this real quick, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So here is the base ejector plate and this half 13 threaded hole is where the, the push rod for the molding machine engages and then pushes this whole plate forward uh, up through the mold like this. So this plate's gonna push forward with all the pins attached to eject the parts off of the stripper plate over here. So to do that, we need to stack all this up and measure. So we'll put the mold block, the B side, base on here and I'm feeling for any kind of issues as long as you clean it off. Okay, so that's got a good, reasonably good thud to it. All right, so what we're gonna do is figure out our pin heights, our ejector pin heights. So a lot of times I wind up just holding the pins up against the side of the mold like this to get a rough estimate. And uh, a lot of times I'll mark it with a marker, like a Sharpie. 
and then use a die grinder cutoff wheel to effectively cut these to length. Let me flip, to, flip this around where the origin was. So that's the original origin in the mill, this little circle that's, that's scribed in. And you can see our ejector plate is uh, lined up better. <laughs> so this side is a little easier to, to get first height measurements. And this marker is basically just to hack off the excess ejector pin with a die grinder. So let me get the other pins that we need. We're going to do eighth inch and one sixteenth and then one three sixteenths pin that goes down the middle. All right, so to cut these, these short ejector pins, I use these uh, super cheap uh, dis quasi disposable cutters. Ironically though, I've had these longer than anything, but they're intended to be destroyed because I'm cutting these semi hard ejector pins with them like so. It's just easier than dealing with a die grinding cutoff wheel. But for the larger pins, we do need to use the, the die grinding cutoff wheel. Launching these little projectiles everywhere. Okay. Now these, we're going to use the cutoff wheel. So I will be right back. I don't think you're interested in me cutting these. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. So I roughed out the ejector pins and now we're going to get a more precise dimension of the height of the ejector pins because we need to essentially find this height where the blue marker is that I roughed out the pins and then subtract the height of the pocket down to where the, the mold surface is. So it's going to be this height minus that height. So after much consideration, yep, yeah, 5163. Okay, 5163. Six three, so five inches, one hundred and sixty three thousandths. And then I'm going to subtract the height of the mold cavity itself. Oh, there we go, one fifty seven. Okay. So after doing some math, it looks like our ejector pins need to be five inches and six thousandths high, <laughs> and that's the distance from the top of our ejector plate to the top of our mold cavity. So let's go ahead and do that. I have a grinding fixture that I made. This guy over here. which I'll briefly show you. I've got another show coming up where I show how I made this thing. And to be honest, it's getting kind of late, so I'm not going to film all of the surface grinding. But this grinding fixture is set up to house various different ejector pins and an array of them. So this is what I'm going to use to grind our pins. But consider this a sneak preview because I got a, a whole episode of footage on how I made this thing and how it works. Anyway, but I will be back with ground pins because I'm running out of time. <laughs> okay, so we are ready to stick our ejector pins through our plate, but first we need to hammer in the, the linear rods that will align the ejector plate, you know, with all the pins to push out the part with some pressed in bearings. And hopefully these don't give us as many problems as the other ones did. Um, I think since I've got this in my hand, I will go ahead and press in this guy. As I recall, this was a, yeah, it's almost a hand press. So let me just tap that guy in and it will be retained when we bolt the whole mold together. So it's not really going to go anywhere. So that made life a little easy. Don't have to deal with stuff constricting or running off, off axis or anything like that. Of course, this one is a little tighter. As I recall, that's, the, that's how it was when we made it. So I can use the corner of the bench. Okay. Let me make sure that's, yep, it's not interfering. I got some bench residue on the mold. <laughs> now we got to deal with getting this, these guys in place. Let's see if I can just tap it. Oh, okay, so that goes in much easier. In fact, it's, it's self-aligning too. Of course, am I... One of these I made looser. Yeah, okay, so I made the bottom plate looser such that I'm not going to be fighting the other one as I try to press it in. 
you know, some, it's like half a thousandths clearance. See how that just slips right in where the other one I had to hammer it in. So let's go ahead and hammer in the other bearing here. I just want to make sure I've got the right orientation, which means I got to look at the back of our mold. And actually we're symmet symmetric on one side, so that helps a lot. Okay, so we're good. So I need to press this or hammer this bearing in from this direction. And it's self-aligned, which is nice. So did that one. So now we can slide these guys on. Probably wouldn't hurt to give it a tiny bit of oil. These have the, the rule on or kind of like a Teflon liner. It's like a hard plastic or weird Teflon plastic stuff. So that definitely helps with, with it being forgiving on your alignments. Well, we still usually have to tap it. Okay, so there we go. There is our, our slide motion there, nice and controlled. A lot of times you, your ejector plate needs to be kind of robust because you can develop a lot of force to push large plastic parts off of your mold. So in this case, they're tiny little parts, so I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of force. We probably didn't even need guide rails, but, but this is a customer's mold, so I've got to do it, do it the way I normally would do it, you know, full court press type of situation. Okay, and there's the back. Okay, so this is the orientation that we need for the actual referencing plate. Now what we're going to do is slide all of our ejector pins in. And a lot of times I'll account for the thickness of the pin itself. Um, like with a pocket back here, I may still do that, but I, again, I'm running out of time. So we may just rely on, on sandwiching the, well, and we also already cut the, the pins to link. So the only thing I can do is pocket this side. But the idea is to make a little pocket for this head. I'm probably going to have to do some fussing to get each pin to go in. So let's see how easy or hard this is. It's possible we got to chase out with a reamer some of these holes. Yeah, we're definitely hitting an edge somewhere. Ah, oh, there we went. So this is that, that little chamfer, if you recall, I, I was putting small little chamfers on the backs of some of these ejector pins because what happens is you've got a perfect hole and you've got a perfect pin and if any of that is out of alignment by one ten thousandths then you're screwed. So what I'm doing is I'm tapping these pins into the little cones to get them going and started and then they, uh, then they go home. So that's good. And then if we look out the front you can see how the ejector pins are poking through the mold cavity and the stripper plate. Because ultimately the precision seal or the tight tolerance is the hole in the stripper plate. There's a clearance hole in the, in the, uh, in the steel block behind the stripper plate. Okay, so 16th inch pins on the outside and 8th inch pins in the middle. And we just got to convince each pin to go in by hopping over all the little, all the little cone chamfers that we added in the, in the, as it travels through the mold. If you overdo it, then you can start to buckle your pin, your ejector pin, and then, you know, the life of the pin is lost. Or it actually gets stuck, which sucks too. But these, they're just kind of getting convinced to find their home, and then there may be some micro flexing going on, but usually that's not too big of an issue. For really high production molds, it can be because they'll start galling up, you know, like 100,000 cycles later. But this is going to be maybe 2,000 total parts for the life of the mold. So I'm not too worried about it, which is like two days of running. <laughs> so we're kind of vibrating and shimmying and convincing these pins to find all of their little chamfered holes. So this is why 
you kind of need a high precision CNC mill to, to make these molds because all of these, all these features need to be aligned within sub thousands uh, to, to really have accuracy. You know, for instance, I can push in this corner and the bottom down here is moving because it's a high precision alignment. Uh, if you eyeball this stuff and these pins are never going to be in the right position and then this thing will never move correctly. So that's where you kind of need CNC operation. Okay, so here's the back of our ejector plate which basically just houses or contains our pins and I'm going to pre-align it on the 1000s or so clearance that I added in for the back of the bushing blocks. I'll give it a little tap. Oh, well actually it's seated because our ejector pins are an eighth of an inch and that's an eighth of an inch thick. Okay, so let's screw our ejector plate together because there's this, this mold's got an appointment with a molding machine, which in all likelihood I'll probably load in the morning because it's, I don't know, 8.30. <laughs> Like anything, it, sometimes you just got to run it in a little bit. It's not really a big issue for the molding machine because it, it, it applies, I think, up to three or four tons of force on the ejector plate. It's where I'm applying, you know, 10 to or 30 to 40 pounds. <laughs> All right, so I think we're good. Let's go ahead and finish assembling this thing. Just goes like that. All right. Again, my brother is making these for me. I actually just placed another order with him. I think he's making six sets. These he didn't make. His are nicer than this. But uh, so we threaded, we put some 3 8 16 threads in the bottom of the main block here. And what we do is we run these bolts through and essentially just tie it all together. For a more permanent production mold, we would actually dowel pin this stuff. But for now, we're not doing that. Yeah, and I got to that's a tight fit on that. Uh, well, I guess it goes in. Well, I had to scrounge up some bolts. The uh, hardware store, I think, is closed right now due to curfews or something. But anyway, I found three bolts. Uh, I could probably find a fourth one, but tomorrow I'll get a better set of hardware from the hardware store. Uh, but this will keep us going so that we can prove out everything on the mold. So we'll tighten these guys down. It'd be nice to find another bolt. I think I need a five inch, three eighths hex head bolt. Okay, but you know, this will keep us going. So we'll pull the ejector plate back like that. And then if we look at the top, hopefully we shouldn't be able to see. I do see a little bit of a gap. So that gap means I could probably machine down these, these feet to dial in the heights of everything. But another thing I'm going to have to do is is measure the height of this mold, the, the, this surface, to make sure that it's not cocked in any weird way. And, and with the, the state of these feet, uh, I probably do have to fly cut these down. So I probably could stand to take maybe three thousandths off. The other thing to keep in mind is when the molding machine really crunches down on this with 20 tons, 
or 25 tons of force, I'll probably get those two or three thousandths back uh, from just the compression of all of this and, and all, the, all the not quite right seatings to actually press down and press in. Uh, these pins are kind of floating, so they'll actually rise up as the rest of the mold sinks down and seats into its final compressed state. So I don't know, I, I think it's, it's probably best just to run it as is. And I mean, cause right now the pins are slightly below the surface, which means they're not gonna crash into anything when the mold closes. So the final, I guess, cherry on top would be to load this guy. I'm gonna have to key these in the future. Okay, but right now we've got two bearings, so you can't really key it. Other molds have four posts and they offset one of the corners uh, so that you can't stick the, the, the top on backwards. But in this or architecture, we only have two alignment pins. So I am going to double check. This is the wider part and the pins are farther away and the pins have a bigger gap on this side. So we're good. And then we'll see how we fit. I gotta deburr these edges. They're like razor sharp right now. Okay, and then we bring the guy down and it looks like it seats good. I see a little, there's a little bit of a gap here, but there's an, an intended little gap here and I see a, an angle as well. So I'm probably gonna have to put both halves of the mold or the mold, whole mold stack on the granite and then indicate this, the top surface. I may have to adjust the heights of one of these because I don't really know what the status of these riser blocks are, but I'll stick them on the granite surface and I'll make sure that, you know, each, each level is, is, is square and flat relative to the granite. So I'll probably make sure that this surface is flat and then I'll make, make sure that the, the top A side of the mold is flat as well. And then that way we get a good seating of, of the features and then we can load this guy into the mold. One last thing is to drill a couple of 3 8 holes for some cartridge heaters, which is just a resistor in a metal tube. And we'll stick those into the sides to heat this mold up because it needs to be up to, uh, it's I think 200 degrees Fahrenheit, so about 100 C. So yeah, it's gonna be pretty warm. And, but I'd say we are done. Other than I need to pull this stripper plate up and then put the springs back in underneath. But we'll do that at the very end when we're done checking everything else, you know, because then uh, everything, there's gonna be a spring-loaded gap in here and then it'll be hard to indicate. So right before this guy goes on the molding machine, springs go in, screws hold down and tension springs and then the spring plate will always be kind of wanting to pop up. All right, well, that's it for tonight. I am going to head home and tomorrow morning we're gonna load this, this mold on the molding machine and see what kind of parts we get. Thanks for watching.